Hey man, you need to run. Don't walk to the link right down in the description and get this IDX Intelligence Dynamics plugin for free. It's only free during this Black Friday weekend. If you don't get it now, you're gonna have to pay, man. So don't play yourself. Waves IDX is a frequency dependent compressor that intelligently finds excessive frequency energy in your tracks and reduces them, making it easier to mix without over compression or EQ. Whew. That was a lot. <laughs> Man, just take a listen. I need a bag of blue hunters. I want in the bun yeah. and I'm running up on it. I need a lot of pink fifties. I want it in penny. I'm running to get it. I need a bag of blues and a pack of pink. Wow. I feel like a tip to repel. Walking out the bank. I get money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. Money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. What up, y'all? I'm Wavy Wayne from WavyProAudio.com, and this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Today, we are looking at the all new Waves IDX Intelligent Dynamics plugin. In this video, I'll explain why this plugin is unique, how you can use it, and we'll put it to the test. So, let's get started. When you have a dense mix, tracks can get buried. And to try to fix it, we end up butchering that mix with EQ or killing the dynamics with compression. IDX though, it uses intelligent frequency dependent compression to fix the tension in your mixes. It's got me saying a lot of big words too. So I like to think of it as automatic multiband compression, except it's way easier to use and you ain't got to think about none of the controls on a multiband, okay? It automatically compresses your signal based on the busiest frequency ranges, the parts giving the most energy. One of the most unique features though, is that the more you use it, the better the results. And I will show you exactly what I mean. So IDX is so very simple, man. This is really it. And I love plugins that don't have a whole bunch of controls on it. The first thing that you would notice is this little screen at the top here, right? That's just gonna be showing you your original signal down at the bottom, your input signal. Let me see. And then once you turn up this little control, the big knob in the middle, this is the threshold. This is gonna determine how much compression you getting. All right, and at the top, you can see how much reduction is actually happening. So bottom input, the top is the reduction. The middle line is simply the threshold, but it doesn't move. What it actually is, is it'll show you the shape of the threshold and how it responds. So you can tilt that threshold to actually control and compress more of the high frequency energy, or you can tilt it to control and compress more of the low frequency energy. You can also just grab this as a node if you got certain parts that you just want to attack, right? Or you can hold the command key, and by hit, holding command, you can change this node into a shelf, whereas if you want to kind of more aggressively hit the low end and leave the top end alone, or vice versa, you can do that with this node. Just like regular compressor though, you do have the choice of speed. So this speed is a combination of the attack and release all in the same thing. So if you want faster compression speed, you turn to the left. If you want slower, you turn to the right. It starts off at like a moderate setting. You also have control over the knee of the compression. Now this, without getting too technical for y'all right now, hard knee is gonna lend to more punchier sound. Soft knee is gonna be a more smoother sound. So I would start off with like hard knee for anything that I feel is uh, like drums or percussive or anything like that. And a soft knee will be more for like my vocals and melodic instruments. And then if we come over, we have auto gain, which automatically corrects for the gain. So once you are doing, remember compression is literally attenuating your sound. So ultimately your signal is gonna get lower whenever you're using this IDX, but in the background, they're automatically making up for that gain, so it keeps the exact same overall energy in the mix. And to see how that's doing, how that's working, right? You actually have an input level meter and an output level meter to make sure that you always are putting out the same amount of signal as you're coming in with, if that's your goal. Now, if you don't want that to be your goal, you just click on that auto gain feature and you can literally turn it off so easily. Now, just in case you want to do something like maybe um, compress the low end of a vocal without raising up the, the overall loudness of the vocal or whatever that instrument is, you can do that without having the auto gain going and, and then kind of use it like a traditional multiband compressor in that sense to where it's not also, also reintroducing the same level back into the mix, okay? You got your output control, 
and then you got a quick match. This quick match button, you can hit this to, if whenever you're not using auto gain, this is gonna be best to automatically set however much compression you're getting to the output, right? And it'll just automatically snap that output to follow how much gain you are attenuating, how much attenuation, I should say, you are getting from this plugin. Now look, let me just show you how it works on this beat real quick. Let's uh, take everything off here. Solo this beat. So listen, I'm gonna reset the plugin back to its factory default settings. And the first thing that you just wanna do is start to raise the threshold. And again, since we got auto gain on, we're not perceiving any uh, level changes that much, but let's turn it off. You can feel the level changes now. We can even see how input and output meter reacting. So for this, I feel like the high end of this beat is just a little bit too, too bright and it might start interfering with my vocals. So I'm gonna use the threshold tilt to tilt this over to the right a little bit and I'm gonna turn my auto gain back on though. And I'm just gonna, I just wanna have the IDX attenuate some of those high frequencies for me. Cool, I think that sounds pretty good. Now, let's bring in some of these vocals. I've already added the IDX on some of the vocals, but let's, on these like my background vocals, we're not gonna worry about those so much, but let's take a look at the lead vocal on this track, and let's see, we'll actually mute those backgrounds for now, and let's see how this works on a, on a vocal. I need a bag of blue hunters, I wanna end up on it, I'm running up on it. You see that some of that mid frequency, that mid range energy was getting a little bit too out of control. And so again, all I did really here, I left the settings as they were, and I just turned up the threshold really simply. Oh yeah, I should also mention that there's a mix control down here at the bottom if you wanna blend between the wet and dry signals. I need a bag of blue hunters, I wanna end up on it, I'm running up on it. I need a lot of pink fifties, I wanna end up Now listen to how much clearer this vocal starts to pop out the mix once I bring the threshold up and start compressing it with the IDX. Right, and so now they actually work it together where I got the IDX on the, the music and it's, it's getting rid of unnecessary energy in the music and then it's getting rid of unnecessary frequency energy in my vocal as well. Now look, this is where that magic happens that I was telling y'all about, right? Once I actually play this, I'm gonna put, let's say we can take everything off solo actually. I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna bypass all of the IDX, let's bypass all of them, right? And then um, when I bring it back in, listen to the difference that it makes once these, once it adds up. So using one on one track is cool, but once you start using this across multiple tracks in your mix, the clarity and uh, the ease that this mix is gonna start to gel together is gonna be so dope, man. Just take a listen. I need a bag of blue hunters, I want it up on yeah. it, I'm running up on it. I need a lot of pink fifties, I want it in penny, I'm running to get it. I need a bag of blues and a pack of pink. Wow. I feel like a tent of repel, walking out the bank. I get money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. Money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. Money, baby, money, baby, money, baby. She asked me what I'm having, I told her money, baby. So if you ever felt like you were mixing and all the tracks in your mix was just talking like they was in a crowded room and everybody's fighting for attention and, and ain't nobody being heard. The IDX is great for that. You use that on a few tracks, it controls the excess frequency information and you can 
more easily mix those tracks together. They just start to sit together and play together nicely, man. Um, this is a super easy plugin to use and it's actually kind of fun. I was really surprised at how well and how easy it just came together when I first used it without even reading the manual or anything, man. But I hope this helps you get started with the IDX Intelligence Dynamics plugin. I think it could be a great tool to simplify mixing for you. And that's what we all about here, helping you to record and mix better and faster. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavyproaudio.com. Thanks for watching this video. Be dope.